question is, who or what is sinking the Titanic? The Politico says moderates are blaming conservatives. Conservatives are blaming moderates. Senator Lindsey Graham is blaming party chairman Michael Steele. And Karl Rove is blaming Specter himself, about whom David Broder wrote today, the one consistency in the history of Ireland Specter has been his willingness to do whatever will best protect and advance the career of Ireland Specter. But without him, the GOP is now down to 40 senators, with more in trouble next year. We'll talk to former U.S. Congressman Chris Shays, who got beaten last Last year, and former House Republican leader Tom DeLay, two Republicans who may well point fingers at each other. So, where does a party go that is increasingly seen as Southern, religious, and intolerant of different points of view? Where does it go from here? We'll ask our hardball strategists how the GOP should try to right itself. Also, how the Democrats can try to exploit its misery. And did you hear what Condoleezza Rice said when she went absolutely Nixonian when she got challenged on torture? Here's what she said at Stanford when talking about the Bush administration and waterboarding. The United States was told, we were told, nothing that violates our obligations under the Convention Against Torture. And so, by definition, if it was authorized by the president, it did not violate our obligations under the Convention Against Torture. And so what Dr. Rice is saying there, when you see the whole of it, is that if something was authorized by the president, it's okay. That's about as close as it gets to this sugar plum. Or when the president does it, that means that it is not illegal. Well, much more in the politics of torture with Jonathan Turley and Pat Buchanan both coming up here. And while on the subject of what were they thinking, here's Vice President Joe Biden talking to Matt Lauer today on the Today Show. I would tell members of my family, and I have, I wouldn't go anywhere in confined places now. It's not that it's going to Mexico, it's you're in a confined aircraft. When one person sneezes, it goes all the way through the aircraft. That's me. I, I would not be at this point, if, I, if they had another way of transportation, suggesting they ride the subway. So let's get this straight. Mr. Amtrak is advising people to stay away from public transportation. More on Biden's gaffe in the politics fix. And finally, I was on a Tonight Show last night with Jay Leno. We'll show you a bit of that mayhem in the sideshow. But first, the Republican blame game. Tom DeLay was the House Majority Leader and Chris Chase was a Republican Congressman from Connecticut. I want to start with Tom DeLay, who's right with me now. What's going on with the Republican Party? You once had it on the other side of the hill from you, almost 55 or 56 senators. Now you've got 40. What happened? Well, obviously, the Republican Party is taking a political bath and has ever since the uh, 06 uh, election and certainly in the last election. Um, we're, we're searching for leaders. Uh, we're searching for our principles again, although I don't think uh, we lost our principles. We failed to communicate them. Um, and, and we need to uh, convince the American people that uh, we still have our principles and we're going to stand on those principles because people will gather around and support uh, men and women of principle. Did our inspector leave because he has principle and your party doesn't? Our inspector, actually, if you look at his voting record, votes probably with the Republican Party 90 percent of the time. Uh, the last vote he cast that uh, infuriated people in Pennsylvania was the vote on the stimulus package. Yeah. Uh, and that brought, it brought him down. Most, a lot of times you've got to look within yourself. And uh, the switch of the party had nothing to do with running him out of the party or, or coming against him. He had all kinds of support from people within the party. It had everything to do that he, he was convinced that he could not sustain uh, an election in his primary, and he wants to remain a senator. So he switched parties mm. to in get all him the fairness, best chance Congress, of winning. I've been paying attention to this fellow's voting record since I was a kid. He does tend to vote more Republican up in the 80s right before an election. That's true. In other and off seasons, <laughs> he tends to be more in the middle. But let's take a look at this uh, blame game that's going on right now. Politico had a good synopsis today. Let me run through it verbatim. This is what they say. Orrin Hatch and George Voinovich blame the club for growth for imposing a right-wing litmus test that chased Arlen Specter out of the Republican Party. The club for growth blames Specter himself, first for helping to ruin the GOP and then for leaving it. Senator Lindsey Graham sniped at Republican National Committee Chairman Michael Steele. Carl Rove blames Specter again himself. Congressman Shays, uh, you got beaten in a party that can't seem to win in New England anymore. Uh, what do you think? 
Well, first off, I don't think Condi was ballistic, so I think you just got a little carried away there. But, uh, you know, I, this, I, I wouldn't even have appeared on the show if I thought this was about a blame game. I don't think it's about a blame game. Tom and I disagree on a lot of issues, but a party has to be large enough uh, and broad enough to enable an elected official to represent his constituents. And my constituents in New England, the ones I represent in Connecticut, may be different than constituents in Texas. The party has to enable that to occur, uh, that I can do my job representing my constituents and have core values uh, be consistent. Um, so Arlen did vote most of the time with Republicans, uh, but he was a moderate. And, um, you know, I'm sorry to see him go. I think he made a mistake. Well, let me quote you on Condi Rice, just to clear that up, since you said I went overboard on that one. Let me read you her entire statement, and you tell me whether it sounds Nixonian or not. In the memo you were authorized, you author, who authorized torture, I'm sorry, not torture, I'm sorry, waterboarding, is waterboarding torture. Well, the president instructed us that nothing we would do would do would be outside of our obligations, legal obligations under the Convention Against Torture. I didn't authorize anything. I conveyed the authorization of the administration to the agency that they had policy authorization subject to the Justice Department's clearance. That's what I did. And then the question is, is waterboarding torture? I just said, this is her, I just said the United States was told, we were told, nothing that violates our obligations under the Convention Against Torture. And so, by definition, if it was authorized by the president, it did not violate our obligations under the Convention Against Torture.